Welcome back to Sky Odyssey. Look what I got. Unfortunately, it turns out that doing the target mode for speed, trying to finish it in 10 minutes, means you don't get any medals, so I still don't have the radio. But I've got this plane. Without a radio. So let's give it a shot before con continuing and finishing the adventure. Wait a minute. How much does it weigh? 15 tons? Yeah, let's customize it. Ooh, I like these paint schemes. This one. And uh, maybe I'll change the emblem. No, the emblem, not the paint scheme. Nah. No. Yeah, this one. The unlockable. You know, it doesn't look too bad. Who would have thought that to make the F-117 look uh, like a plane, you need to give it a paint scheme that makes it look like a character in the Yakuza games. But here it is. All right. It definitely looks much better with these flames, lightning bolts, things on the back. I'm only taking it for a quick spin. If you want to see the F-117 of Sky Odyssey in action, uh, look up speedruns. It seems that the popular strategy for speedruns is to finish target mode first, uh, maybe unlock the UFO, and then use that to clear the mode very fast, get this plane, and use it to beat almost everything. Also, watching a speedrun, I discovered that you can put floats on the customizable jet. So you don't have to use a swordfish for that. That's, that, that was new. Oh, and obviously the speedruns use this plane for Sky Canvas. Which is pretty crazy. Okay, I think I'll get lost somewhere around here. Because as you can see, the minimap is very limited. And I don't have the real map. So this will be the final video of Sky Odyssey Let's Play. We'll unlock whatever we unlock. And then... I think I should take a break from these flying games, because really, uh, this, is the, this was the third one. I've got a board game I want to play. Oh yeah, here I am back on track to see the rest of the first level. Yes, yeah, so I've got a board game, and uh, there was a pretty lovely thread. Thread versus thread, let's play on something awful forums a few years ago, where people played chess and black and white team plotted against each other. And uh, the game went into turns no one's made before. Almost no one's made before. So... I've got a different board game, it's not chess, and unfortunately does not have an online electronic adaptation. So I'll have to set it up on my desk and, well, I guess get some people from the forums to play it for me and plan the tactics. I mean, I'll do, a, I'll do an introductory video, show how it works, what the rules are and everything, and then we'll see where it goes. Yeah, and I'll have to do videos, like, I think I'll do introductory video, then use photos in a thread, and once every few turns, do a video updating people on the situation. Okay, let's see how the brakes on this plane work. Okay, the brakes are really good, and by the way, this is the fastest plane in the game, as far as I can tell. 
we could go as fast as, what, uh, 1100 kilometers per hour. It doesn't control too poorly either. Come on, stop. So anyway, adventure. Oh wait, no, special graphics, I completely forgot about this. We did unlock a new plane, and we have a render and someone's pencil drawing. Actually, I like the in-game model better. Now let's go to adventure. And off-screen I've already beaten every single map to get um, at least an A rank in them. So, if I do well enough in the final mission, which is actually two separate missions, I might unlock... Uh, what was it? A silver UFO. I've never seen it before. This deep gorge is one route to the legendary tower of Maximus. Protected by ferocious winds and blanketed in dense clouds, one can only guess what lies inside the fabled tower. No one has ever returned alive from Maximus. Oh, so they ship the dead out. Your mission. Fly through the ravine on Destin Island, which leads to the Tower of Maximus, and then land at Eden, your final destination. Weather is cloudy. The skies above Maximus are covered with thick clouds, so its location and the location of Eden are unknown. Take off and fly west. The first landmark on Destin Island is an enormous stone arch. Fly through the arch and enter the ravine leading to Maximus. To avoid the turbulent air above the ravine, fly low. The ravine is also prone to rock slides, so fly with extreme caution. You voted for this. Once you pass through the ravine, you will come to a cave. Fly through this cave towards Maximus. Find Maximus and land at Eden to complete your mission. You know, that choir was really getting into it by the end of the game. Okay, here we are on our swordfish. Wait, what? It has retractable landing gear? Wait, look at this. I... I didn't realize it has retractable landing gear. And, I mean, I didn't realize, I mean, I've beaten the game twice and I didn't know this. Except when I accidentally press a button. Press a button right now. Shocking. Oh, a yellow ring. I need to use it. I need to use it for all the points. Because I do want an A rank. And these points... I, th I technically don't need them for an unlockable, but they do work as a nice safety cushion. If you get damaged or miss uh, the time limit, you can make it up by rolling. Ow. No, no, no. Okay. Alright, the mission is called the Tight Squeeze. There will be a lot of um, tight turning and squeezing, possibly. Hopefully not so much. Every time somebody comes back to fly through this ravine, somebody else has to put all the rocks back up in place. Yeah, you know, just to keep the place more threatening. Doesn't seem too bad so far. Although I don't like these towers. Oh, that's a sneaky ring. Come on. And now to get out of here. 
no, no, no. Okay, everything's good. Okay, why is it blurry? I'm not being... Oh, yes, I am being blown down. I was accelerated by the wind. Okay, it's not my fault. Let's try again. That's where I crashed. That doesn't look like a complete map. I still have... Yeah, I still have quite a long way to go. Oh. Okay, dodge this. And we're out of that area. The towers are no longer a threat. I see an open area. And strangely enough, nothing is collapsing. And there is a hole and we need to go in it. Let's go slow. Looks like there was a headwind and going slow was a mistake. No, I don't know why headwind brings your airspeed to zero. It's... Yeah, winds are very strange in this game. They're more like anchors. Alright, we're, we're done with that, silly. Nonsense? And we can navigate the cave. Yeah, I think Valley of Fire as the final level would have been a bit more spectacular. Although more deadly too. Oh, that... I remember, I, I mentioned, I think I mentioned Hornet Leader in an earlier episode of this. Oh, people, I've got a copy today, and it's weird. It seems very simple, but if you don't plan for your mission properly, you will get destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. On the other hand, it is very simple. Like, I, by the end of the fourth mission, I'm pretty sure I knew all the rules. That is very nice. I mean, I'm not playing Hornet Leader for the videos. Oh, oh! Um, yes. The music's changed, the pace has changed, and the level is getting a bit more... aggressive. Just quietly try to dodge all the pillars, all the walls, and hopefully not get blown away by the wind. If there's one thing I'm happy this game doesn't do, it's vertical winds. I mean, there was like one level with some kind of suspicious fan blowing upwards. But not this one. I mean, I don't, not levels in the adventure mode. Okay, there is wind here. Is there wind in a cave? Oh, oh, I think we're done with this map. Okay, we're done with a tight squeeze, and now we're going into Maximus. There are two different levels. Yep, this is Maximus. And... There is a checkpoint between them. So if I die here... I should be able to, res to restart right from this point. Oh, it's, it's also collapsing. Yeah, it, it's a narrow tunnel which is collapsing. Big surprise there again. There's one thing I don't remember is that whether or not you get to keep your rank if you die in this section and we start from a checkpoint. I hope the game counts the tight squeeze separately from this one, from Maximus. Instead of, you know, averaging it. Or, you know, resetting. 
my score. That would be painful. Really? This is the big ending? Even these falling rocks are not you know not threatening because well they fall the way they fall you know you can dodge them. Oh, oh now we're talking. Moving obstacles. This is near? Wait, has this been running here for centuries? Oh, shit. Hey, let's try again. Now I know what's coming and I can dodge these wooden wheels and not fly into that wall. Nah, just kidding. Okay, let's let's not fly into that wall for real. Because it is getting kinda annoying. And yes, I every time I died there, I was restarting from the beginning of Maximus, not from the tight squeeze. Or a tight squeeze. Ooh, now they're mixing it up, the horizontal wheel and the vertical wheel. All together. And slow down, they better slow down to it. It's a, it's a gameplay mechanic, not a bug. Uh, okay, this is this this doesn't sound good. I mean, normally you wouldn't even notice that the water level is rising in a flight simulator, but I'm starting to regret my camera choice. It's a bit too high, it's a bit too in the wall. I think I see the end. Yes, we're out. Hmm, I wonder if that water follows the laws of physics in any way. And up ahead I see some new ruins. Yeah, I know I've been playing Sky Odyssey for a bit too long when I'm happy to see the same friggin' canyon but with walls of a slightly brighter color. Also slightly different ruins. Yeah, this is um, a major development. This is my reward for beating the game. I think I'm getting lost here. Okay. Uh, going by the minimap, I'm going the wrong way. Do I have some time? Okay, we let's consider this uh, picturesque tour of the market streets or whatever, whatever it was in these ruins. Who built them? Why? Were they expecting, were they designing these ruins so that you could fly through them? The game never explains. Oh, and it's a good thing I, I have not read the intro to the game that is in the manual. Because it's gibberish. Really, half of the dialogue is someone's line is like, okay this person is talking and then there is in brackets open brackets unintelligible close brackets because for more than half of the dialogue the radio is malfunctioning or something and I don't even know how that dialogue relates to anything that happens in the game maybe it's a story of the adventurer who disappeared trying to get here maybe not 
but it's silly. Uh, I'm glad I decided not to read it. Because it's bad. Like this forest texture. Okay, the final checkpoint, and it's a yellow one. Now, incidentally, notice that the runway below us is not, you know, is not clearly marked. It doesn't have a regular shape, and... I think in my first playthrough I actually managed to crash here. Like, I landed but somehow missed the runway, because you, you can't really see, it's a flowery field, and, and, and that's all. That's all there is to it. So you can miss it and crash right there at the very end of the final mission and you have to redo the entire Maximus again. But I didn't. Surprising myself. Okay, rank A, so there is a chance I unlock something. Now, the game would put the final cutscene here, but I decided to cut it and put it at the end of the video. Instead, we'll go straight to... what are they? Oh yes, the unlockables. We've got this, a Messerschmitt 262, and the Silver UFO. Meaning I did get an A rank on every single mission. Let's look at the pictures. We don't have these pictures because the game expects you to replay it multiple times and you unlock those pictures only after beating the first few missions over and over again. This is a tight squeeze. This is Maximus. And this is, I think, unlocked for completing the game with the... what's it called? With the swordfish. Yeah. So if you want all of these pictures, you need to complete the game using different planes. This is our new guest. This time the drawing's better. And the UFO. This one is even more shaped like a lampshade. For some reason we haven't unlocked any new cutscenes, uh, any new screenshots from the, from the opening cutscene. Wait, is that an alien on on type on the silver UFO? See that in the background. Well, there is no alien here, unfortunately. Yeah, I like this. Uh, this one has a different sound. A much more interesting sound. So it's kind of cute. Uh, but I'm not sure I like the way it's reflecting the skybox. Does it reflect the ground? No, that's, that, that's too difficult. Especially for an early PS2 game. And there's the emblem. Yes, the emblem on the UFOs is on the bottom. Okay, I'm bored of this. Let's try the other plane. why the game keeps unlocking faster and faster planes. They don't control so well. And they're kinda useless if you've got the F-117. But here it is. You know, thinking about it, Sky Odyssey really needs a sequel. Like an everything improved sequel. Better graphics, more sensible unlockables, more variety in missions, more variety in environments, just general improvement in all aspects. But it doesn't have it. Which is a shame. I mean, it has a lot of small details, like, for example, if I fly this thing very low, remember there's downwash. We can see it even on this jet. Do we call this downwash if it's a jet? Okay, let's, 
let's put the camera to the side and look below the plane carefully. It's going to appear right before I crash. So, cutscenes. And the screen goes dark. But wait. Oh. I'm not controlling the plane. I don't like it when the plane is flying without me. Oh, I know what's happened here. We, we landed on this island, and someone has stolen our plane. That must be it. And they're taking it away. The open sky calls again. Not really... you didn't make a sequel. Maybe they meant New Game Plus, you know, beat the game again. All the same levels see another final mission? I don't know. It's not that exciting. So let's put Sky Odyssey aside for now. <laughs> 